Okay, so I've just finished doing all the electronics and wiring. So I wanted to go through that. Uh, before I do, my wheels and finally came through, so I've got my tyres on. They're the, I believe they're 90 millimeter um, metal rims with the beads on the inside for the WL Toys K989. And these are 33 millimeter gecko tires for the 124 Auto RC Gecko 2. The 33 mil, they just about work with the sh body shell. Unfortunately, I ruined the body shell, so I'm waiting on being able to get a new one before I can finish completely. So, right, let's have a look at the wiring. So, here's one look. Uh, one side of the rear. I have the brake at the top. So the brake at the top one, which you probably can't, you won't be able to see right now, but top's brake, middle is reverse, and the bottom is the indicator. I'll try to do the wiring so that it wouldn't, wouldn't interfere with the holes we have to screw the panels on later. Cables, cables everywhere. All I have to do is uh, cut a tiny notch at the back of the cab once I get a new one so that the, it goes over the wires and doesn't try to crush them. For the front, I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. So the indicators and headlights go through one on the underside and the top one only has the two lights for the front bumper. I'm going to turn it on and show it in a moment. As you can see, I decided to use some little, these little plastic parts are from uh, the Tamiya Mini 4 Wheel Drive MS Brake Pack set. And it come, it usually the set comes with like four of these pieces, and I have so many saved up. They make for good little pipes for routing wires. So I'm glad I saved all those. As you can see, my although I've got it all neatly, well, to a large degree, neatly wired and cleaned out. So I've got all these wires together, held together by the wire from the servo. Uh, this one is for the lights on the body shell when, it, when it's done and the battery so the only real messy part is down here where I didn't cut enough wire for the for all the for all the lamps I cut all the wires a bit short and had to fiddle around so I couldn't really tidy it up very nicely but I think for the most part it's come out quite decent all right let's power it on and have a look at the lights so as you can tell i'm using the d4l all-in-one controller with this which is the original uh, the orlando controller you can get for about in pounds it's about 45 pound i don't know how much that is in dollar or anything else And straight off the bat, it is not binding again. Go figure. Right, let's turn this off, rebind it. Uh, okay, I'll be right back. I can't I forgot how to do this. Okay, so I just went away, had a look in the manual. Uh, I've got it all sorted now. So let's have a look then. So the rear lights. 
So if they're off at the moment, we turn them on using the little button on the side here. Now we have the, the main rear lights. We also have the main front lights. Now if we do a long, long press on this button, it should turn on the auxiliary lights, which is what these ones are wired to in the bumper. So that will also be the ones for the body shell once it's done in the front grille. Um, okay, for indicator, when you turn direction, and the same on the other side, okay. So the car won't actually move until you start it up. To start it up, you just pull the trigger. This part here is the um, sound speaker for it. All right, so slow crawl, and then you have brake light, and then you also have the reverse light. After about five seconds, it automatically turns off the um, sound, which means it disables the car too. And it won't run it again until you pull the trigger to start the engine. And it will only run after the initial startup sound is finished. Okay, so there's two sounds. That's the first one I have, which is on number two, I believe. We'll change it over to the second sound. Okay, we start it up again. So that's the sound it originally comes with. We start setting that sound number one. And this is sound number two. So, I've been able to manage to fudge it all around so that I can fit on a big 450 milliamp battery. Probably a bit overkill for this, but. I had that one spare and wasn't really using it for anything so and the big the base for the car was just so big for all the electronics I figured hey plenty enough space I am going to be switching out the servo soon I've just ordered a new one uh, it's a what is it a five points I think a five point four five point seven uh, it's basically got a lot more torque than this one so hopefully that's going to solve my steering issue which I've been having in previous videos. Uh, I just wanted to go over one more thing so let me just restart this recording. Because the stupid 10 minute time limit on the video on my phone. <clears throat> so as you've all noticed when I was just holding it up and giving it power, I've managed to break one of my CVDs. Now, I prefer to use lock nuts on all my wheels, this way it can, the regular nuts will, I mean, if you're not careful, they can have a habit of working their way off and then the whole wheel comes off, but, so I changed them out for these M2 lock nuts, and as I was tightening the wheel, or tightening the nut rather, onto the wheel, I didn't hold the wheel. As a result, the, um, the wheel turned against the CVD and it just sheared off the dog bone which I have here and 
It's hard to see, but yeah. Very tiny. Well, I think that has something to do with um, the length of the shafts. I had a feeling this might happen. Probably not the way I was expecting it to happen, but that was um, broken through my own power. If we look here, I do experience the same thing when I'm trimming these shafts for the uh, Tamiya Mini four wheel drive. Well, not trimming, but um, trying to thread them like this. So when I'm trying to use the die to thread, thread these shafts um, and hold the shaft closer to where it's being trimmed, it doesn't have much of an issue. But if you hold it at the bottom of the shaft or the further away from the shaft you hold it when you're trimming the top, so for example like this, if I was to hold it down the bottom end of the shaft like this wheel, when I'm trying to do this bit here, thread this bit, I've come to find that the shafts tend to twist a lot easier than if they were much shorter and held closer to where the threading is being done. I have a feeling this is the exact same principle that's happened to the uh, CVD, which is why it's snapped. So I figured, since I've still got a spare one still running, so it's, at the moment it's three wheel drive, I figured why not Give it a quick test to see what happens. So imagine you're going to get your wheels stuck in a sort of V-shape overhang so it can't turn anymore. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens if I hold the wheel. Can the motor actually break the CVD without um, break the CVD under its own strength instead of my manual strength. And the answer to that unfortunately is going to be a yes. It can snap the heads off by itself under its own strength. So now I am in need of two CBDs. Woohoo! And I haven't released them yet. Damn. Let's have a look what we got under here. Yeah. It's, okay, let's see. Uh, it's a bit difficult to get out there, but uh, can we see it? It has actually bent. It has actually bent the shaft a tiny bit towards the end where the head was. So it is as I feared. Because the other ones that are for the um oops, sorry. The other ones that are for the like the Land Rover, the P01, the A01, A02, A03, they have a much shorter shaft, which means it has a much more strength against turning, against the torque. With these being long, it has much more air, much more length over which to apply that torque, which creates a t twisting effect, as I was ex trying to explain before with the threading on a sh axle shaft. And um, that extra length has allowed it to twist a bit more than it really wants to, and has just sheared it off. So now I have two broken CVDs, one under my own power and one under the car power. This is one of the big issues I was afraid of. So I will get back with an update on that at a later time. In the meantime, I hope you find this video inter uh, interesting, picked up a few points from it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all again another time.